Welcome to Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition. Today we're going to talk about the Battle of Fort Ridgely, located in Nicolette County, Minnesota, on August 20th to the 22nd, 1862. This was the beginning of what would have been known as the Dakota War of 1862. This was an uprising of four tribes of Native Americans, specifically the Sioux Nation, who for the last 25 years had faced a dwindling set of game and other opportunities for them to live on. In order to deal with the situation, the Sioux Nation sold approximately 5 million acres of land to the U.S. government for $1 million. A few years later in 1851, desperate to afford to support their people, the Dakota tribes sold more land. This time it was 24 million acres in exchange for $3 million and a place on the reservation that was 150 miles long and 20 miles wide along both sides of the Minnesota River. Once again, they gave up their land but were denied their payment by the U.S. government in addition, the U.S. Senate cut out their place promised to them on the Minnesota River, denying them the home they'd been promised. Eleven years later, in 1862, the Dakota tribes were facing starvation after a decade of already hard years. They were not receiving their yearly payments from the U.S. government, so had no way to try to make up for this hardship. The Sioux Nation approached the Dakota lower and upper agencies that served as an administrative center between the U.S. federal government and the Sioux Nation. There, they asked for food, but the government, who had warehouses full of food that just sat there unused, refused. The lead trader at the agency, Andrew Myrick, is quoted as saying, So far as I am concerned, if they are hungry, let them eat grass. Having no other options, the Sioux tribes prepared and attacked on the morning of August 18th. Led by one of the village chiefs named Little Crow, they sacked the lower agency. The end result was the lead trader, Andrew Myrick's body, being found with his mouth stuffed full of grass. Another attack occurred at the town of New Ulm and 59 more people were killed or wounded. The settlers in the area began fleeing and saw a safe place at Fort Ridgely, an unstockaded fort that was the only protection in the area. Located about 15 miles east of the Lower Sioux Agency, the garrison was led by U.S. Captain John S. Marsh and 210 men. On August 19th, he set out with 46 men from the fort to go to the Lower Sioux Agency in order to push back the Native Americans. Marsh and his men were caught halfway there on the road and decimated. Captain Marsh was killed during this skirmish. The remaining soldiers that survived the initial onslaught retreated back to Fort Ridgely. On August 20th, Little Crow led 600 Native Americans in an unsuccessful attack on Fort Ridgely. They were stopped by Union artillery, including two 6-pounder field guns, two 12-pounder mountain howitzers, and a large 24-pounder howitzer. On August 22nd, Little Crow returned with 900 men to lead a second attack, but was once again repulsed. Little Crow decided they'd move on to other places and left immediately after this last engagement. The estimated Union casualties were 26 killed, 23 of them were with Marsh, 3 at Fort Ridgely itself, 14 wounded, while there were only 2 confirmed kills and 5 confirmed wounded of Dakota tribal members. This unfortunately would be a brief glimpse of the future of the West. Please join us again next time on Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition.